Hello everyone, Clayton White here, and today I am going to be basically giving a, or starting a tutorial series on using Unreal Engine 4. Now I'm running on Unreal Engine 4.7 and 0.2, 4.7.2, and that is the latest version, and since Unreal went free, thank you Epic, I have decided, in honor of that, that I'll start making a tutorial series. So what you see in front of you is what you'll get after you install and open Unreal Engine for the first time from the Epic Games Launcher. Now in here you have the new project tab which is what I'm currently on which allows you to create a project from pretty much any one of these templates that they provide and there's actually quite a lot and you can choose whether Blueprint or C++. Um, this, is going, this tutorial series is going to be focusing on Blueprint because honestly I'm not great at C++ but I know Blueprint so <laughs> Just teaching you what I know, not what I don't. If you want a C++ tutorial, though, there are tons of those out here on the great wide internet, and a lot of them are really great. So if you do want C++ and not Blueprint, now's your chance to turn around and go find a tutorial series that can provide that for you, because I can't. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Then you have the Projects tab, which is where, if you have already started work on something, closed it down for a little bit, this is where you can reopen it. Um, you can also do this from the Epic Games Launcher directly, but I mean this is always an option as well. But we're going to be creating a new project today, and we're just simply going to base it off of the first person blueprint. Now the reason why I'm doing this and not doing it on a blank one is because coding a character controller is a bit cumbersome, and I will do a tutorial on that later, but not now. So, for all, uh, for now, this doesn't really matter. All that matters is we're just going to start with the first person template because, as it says here, the first person template features a player character represented by a pair of arms, which is viewed from the first person perspective. This character can be moved around the level using the keyboard controller or virtual joystick on a touch device. Um, it's, it includes a whole bunch of, like, it basically just gets the groundwork set for you. And since we're not focusing on the bare minimum right now we're go I want to kind of just jump straight in with you guys so you can start prototyping games and learning blueprint and then after you've learned a fair amount of blueprint we're gonna dive into creating our own character controller because that is where things get a little complicated it's not it's not hard in comparison to things like creating an inventory system or functioning network code but it is still intermediate grade and we're going to be starting as a novice so, we're going to select first person, we're going to say that it is a desktop slash console game, maximum quality. Now, quality actually, you can, you're going to want maximum quality, because we're not doing a 2D game, so that doesn't matter. Um, and with starter content, we want the starter content purely because the starter content will give us access to all sorts of nice textures and some basic models that we can use in our levels, and it's super helpful to have that. So, moving on from that, I'm you. Then you kind of pick your location to store the project itself, which I'm storing it on my second hard drive under the folder Unreal Engine Unreal Projects, and then I'm going to name said project Tutorial because you know it's tutorial. So yeah, I didn't name it a Tutorial. I don't really need to explain that. Anyways, <laughs> moving on, we're going to just simply click Create Project now, and it's going to create the project file and then it's going to open it up in the Unreal Engine 4 editor which is a very very well made piece of software that is very intuitive and very easy to use everything is contextual and it's fantastic we're going to do a UI overview and then that will be the end of this video before we move on to creating a basic level and working with geometry and shapes so yeah alright as you'll notice we have Unreal Engine 4 now. Now some things to note about the interface. We're going to start up top over here where my mouse is. I'm moving it around a little. We have the tabs, which this is a really helpful feature so you can have multiple tabs running instead of having to have windows everywhere. You have your file menu, your edit menu, your window menu, and your help menu. The help menu is great because it can show you all sorts of documentation and give you access to tutorials and all sorts of stuff. It's 
it's not like most applications where you just have to like plod through the instructions for like five hours trying to find that one line of text that will help you fix what you're trying to fix. This is actually really well documented, really well uh, supported by the community and everything. So that will actually be great. And look, look, I mean, you can even get documentation on a freaking cube. This is a cube. Like, you can get documentation on a cube. That's all I'm going to say. Um, and then over here, we now have the modes toolbox, which is basically, oh, this mode that we're in right now is the place mode. It allows you to place all sorts of various items, such as, well, cubes, spheres, cylinders, cones, box triggers, sphere triggers, player starts, point lights, empty pawns, player characters, I mean, empty characters, all sorts of stuff. You can, I mean, it's pretty much great. Then you have the paint tab, which we're not really going to mess with right now as it's not important. The terrain tab, which is if you want to make a landscape. We're also not going to use that right now. The foliage editor, which is a very nice little tool. And the geometry editing, which is for basically advanced level design. Um, although it is advisable that you do not do the majority of level design with geometry, but we'll get into that later. Um, now moving downwards, we have the content browser. The content browser is basically where all of your files for your game are going to be stored, even this first person overview video, or tutorial rather, um, which you can choose to go through that if you'd like, but you don't have to. In the first person blueprint folder, you'll have all sorts of different stuff like animation, audio, blueprints, character, maps, meshes, textures, all sorts of stuff that will help get you started. In addition, you'll have the starter content folder, which is right next to it. And this works just like a file browser. So you just click on the folder you want, and then you can double click on stuff in here to open it. And like we have walls and stuff that we can place, or we could go back and open up the, the blueprint tab. And we could, like we have uh, that, sorry, I derped there a little. We have some nice blueprints here for stuff. Like we got a steam effect, this is pretty cool. And you'll notice that what I did right there is I just literally clicked, held, and dragged it into the world. That's all it takes to pretty much instantly get something going. You'll also notice that it has yet to load the textures. There we go. Good job, Unreal. So, I mean, now we have this Steam effect right here, which is really cool. And it even comes with audio and everything. And you'll notice I'm moving around in the viewport now. Now, the viewport is basically where you'll do all of your designing. It starts in perspective mode, which is where you have this free-flying camera that you can navigate by pressing and holding right-click to look around, and then when you let go, your mouse will be free again. Um, and then you can use W to go forward, S to go backwards, A to move left, D to move right, while you're holding right-click. You can also use left mouse to pan, like to kind of dolly the camera forward and backwards, um, and pan it left to right. I pretty much never use that, but it's it's still there. Um, if you prefer to get around like that, then by all means. Then you also have the ability to zoom out, and you can zoom out like a ridiculous amount. Like, look at this field of view. What would you ever do with this? And then you can use C to zoom back in. Z zooms out, C zooms in. Um, and then you have, in addition to those, Q moves your camera down, strafes down, and E moves it up. This, these are relative to the world, but not to you. So that is something to note. If you are wanting to pan up, but you're facing this way, you actually want to hit W and not, well actually W always moves you forward, sorry about that. And then you also have, you see I just clipped through a piece of geometry there. Um, you'll notice that the camera reset to the default field of view after we let go of it, which is nice. That way you don't permanently mess up your field of view. Um, in addition, you do have rolling, I believe, though it's not really very useful unless you're working on a matinee cutscene. We'll get into that later, though, as well. All right, moving on from that, we now have the world outliner over here. Sorry, I had to actually get over there and read what it was because I just, I don't know, I call it the thing. It is very, 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 very helpful though, as this is basically where all of your stuff will be stored and you can sort it, which is stupidly helpful because 
it allows you to see like we have arena geometry arena and then we have the walls the floor um, and then we have the cubes in their own little folder and it's all neatly organized it's really helpful to have all this stuff excuse me <laughs> in addition to that we also have the details tab which allows us to interact with objects so if we go in the viewport and just click on a cube you'll see we get a translation widget which is this thing here it allows us to move the cube up move it over move it that way you can basically translate it around the map you can also grab between any of the two arrows to move it in that plane only see I'm trying to move it up or down but it won't move up or down you can also grab in this plane which will restrict it to that plane of movement or this plane or you can grab it in the center which will allow you to move it freely which is very helpful um, in addition if you press the space bar or go up here and click right there this allows you to rotate the object in any direction. You basically rotate it in any one of the three axes by grabbing the handle and just spinning it the way you want it to go. And lastly, that brings us to the next thing, which is scale. Now, scale is pretty self-explanatory. It allows you to um, deform objects by scaling them in certain axes, usually relative to the object, but you can scale relative to world as well as translate and rotate relative to world. You can change that actually by right here. You can see cycles the transform gizmo coordinate systems between world and local it is very helpful if you're trying to move something around but you only want it to move according to the object and not necessarily the world or to the world not necessarily the object it's quite helpful in addition to being able to scale these though like this sorry for getting on a little tangent there you can also do the same thing as the translation widget and grab anywhere between the two um, and you can grab in the center to scale it uniformly which is super helpful. So now we have this gigantic floating block. Um, it's probably not exactly the most useful thing, and I don't know what you'd really do with this in a level, but hey, you made it. And you'll notice, actually, while we have this selected, that we have the details pane over here. Now the details pane is basically where all the magic happens. This, is, this allows you to get precise values on its location, its rotation, and its scale by keying them in yourself. You can also change its mobility, which will basically mean if it will interact with physics or not. If you have something that is static, even if it's floating like this, when you start a simulation or you play the game, what's going to happen is it's just going to float. It's not going to, I mean, even if logically gravity should be pulling it down, it will stay there. Moving on from that, we also have the uh, movable, which is basically exactly what it says. The object will be affected by physics and it will interact as if it is a physical object. So this can be shown if I click play and you'll notice the very loud steam and the very loud gunshot. Sorry about that. Um, but you'll notice that the little thing fell down. The box is not very little, it's actually taller than me. But it fell down and it is now just laying on the ground. It can actually be moved around too but my character probably isn't exactly strong enough, so let's try shooting it. You'll notice it kind of moved a little, not, not a lot. We don't exactly have the proper means to move this gigantic of a box. We can move boxes like this one, though. See, not much, though. Yeah, there we go. We got it to flip. Maybe we can do that with this one. Yeah, that one, that one just doesn't like us. Either way, you get the example. And that's pretty much it when it actually comes to the UI of Unreal Engine 4. It's surprisingly simple. You get all this stuff, all this advanced engine, and all it is is just this little toolbox. It's open to you. Of course, when you open Unreal, you might have it organized differently, and you can choose to organize it differently by dragging the tabs around. See, this is what I'm more familiar with, because when I used to use Unreal, uh, before I stopped paying the subscription for it, uh, this is what your viewport looked like usually or it's it's what mine looked like It took up this whole area on the screen and the content browser was over here Honestly, I actually do kind of prefer having the content browser below now that I've actually had it like that not like that though Okay, come on content browser you can see me struggling here because I'm stupid content browser thou shalt behave 
Not like that. Okay, now this is a good thing where a good time for us to probably click reset layout. And this will basically change. I mean, it won't change anything. It'll just save your editor, close it, and reopen it with the stock layout of the map, which, well, not the map, sorry, your UI, which is super helpful if you accidentally screw something up like I did. So there you go. Now we're back to normal. Yay! No more weirdness. And we still got our weird block over there, and everything's still normal, except the UI. It's back to the way it was. All right, guys, so thank you for watching this little tutorial that I decided to throw together on Unreal Engine 4. I appreciate your time, and hopefully you guys will want to see more because I'm making more. And if you don't want to see it, then well, I guess you don't have to click on it. Ultimately, your choice. Thank you for watching. Be sure to leave a like down below if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, and comment if your feelings are more complicated than up or down. So, yeah. Thanks, guys. See you later.